Hello, this is Pastor Frank from the Balsam Bible Chapel. I was gone last week prior to Thanksgiving, and so today in the message I want to bring a Thanksgiving message from the book of Daniel. So I'll be in Daniel chapter 2 and in chapter 6. As I've said before, out of all the holidays in the year, I think my favorite is Thanksgiving. And I like it because giving thanks is so biblical. In the, in the New King James Version, the word thank in its various forms of thanks and thanksgiving and so forth shows up 134 times. 134 times. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, beginning in verse 18, it says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. And then in verse 21, it says, Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful. Thank, thanksgiving, being thankful, is a huge topic in the Bible. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body, and be thankful. Now the Bible goes on to give a couple of verses that uh, might seem extreme to some people. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Bible says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything, not in most things, not in some things, not in those things that are going our way, but the Bible says, in everything give thanks. And there's another verse that's almost more extreme, it seems, in verse uh, chapter 5 of Ephesians, verse 20, the Bible says, giving thanks always for all things, to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're to give thanks in everything, and uh, I can maybe understand that, but the that next one, it says, giving thanks always for all things. Well, the Bible is filled with verses that deal with Thanksgiving. And so that's one of the reasons it's my favorite. I think my favorite holiday is because it's so biblical. And also another reason is Thanksgiving is so simple. At least it can be. Um, it's inexpensive for the most part. The main cost would be buying extra food if you're having a big get-together or maybe a, spending like a money on a turkey, which you wouldn't necessarily do, but it's pretty inexpensive compared to, especially compared to Christmas. Um, and also, it's Thanksgiving is easily centered on God and on family and on friends. Uh, the whole idea of being thankful. Last week, as I was at the hunting shack in Wisconsin, and that's where I was, uh, out in my deer blind. I was debating what to share in this message for this Lord's Day. I borrowed my sister's car while I was over there. Lynette had our car, and so I borrowed my sister's. And she had the radio turned to Christian radio. And every time I turned the key on on that car, the Christian radio station came on. And all week leading up to Thanksgiving... All week, they played nothing but Christmas songs. Some of them were secular. Most of them were religious uh, in tone. But they were Christmas songs. Uh, and this radio station is known as a conservative radio station. And I was disappointed. I was disappointed. I, it seemed to me like they were burying Thanksgiving. Every once in a while, they would say something like, We... We hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving, but then they go right back to playing Christmas songs. Uh, now, I know that there are more songs dedicated to the Christmas season than there are, there are to Thanksgiving Day, but there's a lot of songs that deal with Thanksgiving. And even if they were to play a Christmas song here and there and, and have the main emphasis Thanksgiving, but every Christmas, every song was a Christmas song. I don't want to bury Thanksgiving in a rush to get to Christmas. I wasn't here last week, uh, so I, I didn't bring a, a Thanksgiving message. But I do not want to bury Thanksgiving in a rush to get to Christmas. And so I'm going to preach a message on Thanksgiving. Let me pray before I go further. Father, I do thank you for this theme, for this holiday. Lord, it is so biblical. We have so much to give thanks for. 
And you have told us that in everything we're to give thanks and we're to be giving thanks always for all things. And so I pray that you would help us to have a spirit of thanksgiving, a heart of thanksgiving. May we be thankful people. I pray this for your glory and Lord, actually for our blessing. Because if we're thankful people, we will be we will have the blessing of your joy and your peace in our minds. So help us in that. And Lord, I pray that you would open our understanding to understand your word as I bring it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, a couple of weeks ago or more, I led a Bible study here at the chapel on Thanksgiving from the book of Daniel. And uh, I'm not for sure why, but that particular evening, there weren't very many people here. Actually, we all sat around uh, one of the round tables. And uh, so I, I want to take that message and, and uh, bring it in today and now. Uh, I apologize to those who were there for, for the review of this uh, in the sermon, but I, I developed it into a sermon because I've been going through the book of Daniel on Sundays here at the chapel. And I don't want to stray from it too much. With Christmas coming up, I plan on straying from it a little bit, getting into the Christmas message. But um, I don't want to. I want to go further in Daniel before I stray from it. In one of the first messages I preached from the book of Daniel, and it might have been the first one, I mentioned the char that the character of Daniel is so important in this book. Um, Daniel is known as quote a man greatly beloved. A man greatly beloved. And that is found in Daniel chapter 9, verse 23, in chapter 10, verse 11, and in chapter 10, verse 19. And I mentioned about how the character of this man permeates this book. And it's a book that's more than just stories. It's a book that's more than just visions. But it's a book that shows us the character, what it looks like to be a person, a man or a woman, a child, a young person who is greatly beloved in the sight of God. This man greatly beloved, that is Daniel, was a man who purposed in his heart that he was not going to defile himself. We see that in chapter 1. He is a man who exalted God. We see that throughout the book. He was a man of prayer. Daniel, this man greatly beloved, was a man who thought of others. He thought of the king. He thought of the king's servants. He thought of his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He thought of the wise men of Babylon. He was thinking of other people, exalting God and thinking of other people. And also, he was a humble man. And in this message, I want to bring out that Daniel, this man greatly beloved, had a thankful spirit. If you want to follow along in your Bible, you can turn to Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to look at Daniel chapter 2, a couple of verses, a few verses, and then Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 2, beginning at verse 19, uh, this, this takes place after the king has had his dream. He's called in the wise men of, of Babylon. He told them to tell him the dream and then interpret it. They can't do either. And so he, uh, he flies into a rage and he, he uh, puts out an order that all the wise men are to be executed. Well, Daniel. Um, goes and he prays, he seeks the Lord with his three friends, and the Lord reveals the king's dream and the interpretation. And um, so the Bible says this, beginning of chapter, uh, verse 19 of chapter 2 of Daniel, the Bible says, Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night, a night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. And then verse 23 of chapter 2. He says, I thank you and praise you. O God of my fathers, you have given me wisdom and might and have made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. It is interesting, Daniel did not jump from verse 19, getting the answer to his prayer, to verse 24, where he runs off to the king and with, with the answer to the king's question. No, Daniel took time to acknowledge God and to thank God for the answers. 
he took time to acknowledge God and to thank him. These verses show us the character of Daniel. A person's character is usually made when no other human being is watching, but God is. It was in the privacy of his home that Daniel prayed with his three friends. And it was in the privacy of his home where Daniel gave thanks to the Lord for the Lord's answer. Again, in verse 23, Daniel says, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have made known to me what we have asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Brothers and sisters, thanksgiving shows humility. And we see it here in Daniel. It recognizes that we're needy. Daniel was needy. If, if Daniel didn't get an answer to, from God, he was going to be like the other wise men and be executed. So thanksgiving shows humility because it recognizes that we are needy. And it also acknowledges that we don't have the answers in, our, in and of ourselves. Daniel did not have the answer apart from God. And so in prayer, we express our dependence on God. And then in thanksgiving, we acknowledge that God is the giver of what we need, and he, he does that. Okay, that was Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 6, if you want to turn over there. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, the Bible says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since the early days. Now let me summarize the story of Daniel and the lion's den. It's a story that is very well known, and a lot of times kids learn that at a very young age. But there was a new leader in charge, and his name was Darius. Daniel was a very good servant to the king, and Darius promoted him. Daniel's fellow servants were jealous of him, and so they looked for something in which they could accuse Daniel before the king, but they could not find anything. Daniel's life and character was so good, they couldn't find anything to accuse him of. And so they came up with a plan. They got the king to make a, to sign an executive order. We could say we, our presidents sign executive orders, and this king signed an, an executive order that no one should pray to any other other than the king for the next 30 days. And anyone found guilty of violating that was going to be thrown into the lion's den. And you can only imagine what would happen then. That was the executive order that was given. Well, again, in verse 10, the Bible says, When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, when this executive order was made, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before God, as was his custom since early days. There's a couple of things I want to point out in this verse. First of all, it wasn't just prayer that got Daniel in trouble. Yes, he prayed, but it was also the fact that he gave thanks before God. That was part of it. It was not just he prayed. Yes, he prayed, but he gave thanks. The second thing I want to point out is in the last phrase, it says, as was his custom since early days. Now, Daniel's custom since early days, in other words, since he was a young man, was not just that of praying. Yes, Daniel was in the habit of praying. But throughout his life, since early days, Daniel's life was characterized by thanksgiving. By the way, the root word of characterized is character. A life characterized by thanksgiving is part of the character of being a person who is greatly beloved in the eyes of heaven. And in verse 3 of chapter 6 of Daniel, the Bible says, then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought of setting him over the whole realm. The word excellent here means, among other things, extraordinary. 
extraordinary. Brothers and sisters, the spirit of thanksgiving makes up an excellent spirit. It's extraordinary. You know, being thankful is not ordinary with a lot of people, especially in these days when we can find so much to complain about. I mean, there is so much to complain about. And if you can't think of anything to complain about, just turn on the news. And real quick, you're given a whole bunch of things that we can complain about and not be thankful for. A spirit of thanksgiving is part of an excellent spirit. It's extraordinary. Again, the character of Daniel is described in Daniel chapter 9, verse 23, where heaven says to Daniel, you are greatly beloved. This is the end result of Daniel's life. He's an old man, and when he hears these words, you are greatly beloved. But this was the character that he had been building since early days, the Bible says there in chapter 6. Since early days, Daniel had been building one block upon the next upon the next, the character of great, being greatly beloved uh, and having this excellent spirit. You know, Daniel faced a lot of different uh, circumstances. Some of those circumstances were good, and some of them were not very good. Many of those experiences that he, he faced were huge. Um, but Daniel did not allow the outward circumstances of life, whether they were good circumstances or bad, he did not allow them to penetrate to his soul. He faced so many things in life, but he remained humble. Through it all, he, he maintained this excellent spirit. He remained humble. He remained dependent upon the Lord. And we see that in his prayer life. So dependent on the Lord. He remained gentle and kind. And Daniel, throughout all his life and the circumstances that he faced, continued having a thankful spirit. In Romans chapter 15, verse 4, the Bible says, For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. According to Daniel, or, or, excuse me, according to Romans 15, 4, Daniel was written for our learning. It was written for your learning. It was written for my learning so that we might see what it looks like to be a person greatly beloved. According to Romans 15, verse 4, Daniel was written so that we might see the spirit of thanksgiving in an individual, in an individual who was ripped from his homeland as a young man and hauled off to a foreign country with foreign gods, with uh, foreign language, foreign culture, ripped from his homeland. That we might see the spirit of thanksgiving in a man who was thrust into the midst of a very pagan environment, a man who was threatened to be fed to a group of lions. The book of Daniel was written that we might see the spirit of thanksgiving in a man who faced worse things than most of us will ever face. We think we face a lot, and some people do. You might be facing an awful lot. But I would encourage you to just consider all the things that Daniel faced in his life. The book of Daniel was written for our learning. And so I learn, this old guy right here learns, that things don't always have to go my way for me to be thankful. I learn through Daniel that I can be thankful even if I'm forced to be where I don't want to be. I can be thankful even though there are people who are out to get me, whether it's one individual or a group of individuals or an entire government system. I can be thankful. Daniel shows me that it is possible, it is possible to live out the two verses that otherwise seem almost impossible to live out, and that is, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you.
1 Thessalonians 5.18. And Daniel shows me that it is possible to live out Ephesians 5.20, where it says that I am to be giving thanks always for all things in the name of our precious Lord. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for Daniel. Father, I thank you for the character of this man. And Father, when we really consider what he faced in life, there were some awful things. There were some very nerve-wracking things. His life was in jeopardy more than once. And even when the king signed that executive order that anybody who prayed to a Anybody but the king would be thrown into the lions. When Daniel knew that, he went and he not only prayed, but he found things to be thankful for. And Father, we live in a world where we are bombarded day after day after day after day with negative things. People doing this, government doing that, and we can become very pessimistic. But, Father, you have called us to, in everything, give thanks. You have called us to be giving thanks always for all things. And sometimes, Lord, that's hard for us to wrap our minds around. But you have called us to do that. And so I pray that we would stand out different. We would be extraordinary. We would not be like everybody else who is always grumbling and complaining and finding negative things to talk about. But, the Father, we would be like Daniel, that we would have an excellent spirit an excellent spirit in the eyes of heaven, and that, Lord, you and your angels would see us as men and women who are greatly beloved. And, Lord, if we're going to be like that, we're going to have to be different than so many others who profess to be Christians. And so help us in that, I pray. I pray this for your glory. I pray it for our blessing. I pray it for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because, Lord, if we will be that type of people, we will be peculiar. We will be different, and people will want to know why. And we will have such an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ with them. So I pray this to that end as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving Day is over. But happy Thanksgiving.